doing this before. Earlier today, I had a live video from the beach and uh, nobody got alerted. So it's like going out to nobody. <laughs> we have one person here, Susie and Cheryl. Namaste, good evening or good morning, wherever you may be. Um, it's funny, yeah, nobody's getting alerted when I go live anymore. So you just happening to catch me live right now. And uh, what I'm gonna be talking about are these high pitched frequencies and they've changed throughout the day. Earlier today, I was hearing this high pitched frequency in the key of F sharp and now it's C sharp. And I was just checking the uh, Schumann resonance chart and I'm not seeing anything there going on. So I'm just trying to correlate one plus one. But what I'm seeing and hearing are these overlaying frequencies. Now, as I mentioned earlier today, I heard an F sharp, which is this. But it's, it's an even higher frequency than that it's a higher pitch. It's much, much higher. Um, you know, this is, if you can imagine like three or four octaves higher, <laughs> that's how high of a pitch it is. But this is how I can determine what the note is. So that would be an F sharp. But I'm also hearing a, a, a C minor. So I have both of those going on today. We had the F sharp earlier. And then we have the C sharp going on right now. And when you put them both together, you get. Can any, any of you guys hear that? Are, you, are any of you guys hearing either the F, the F sharp? or the C-sharp. <laughs> Skylar says her cat is into this. <laughs> Whoever's hearing the high-pitched frequencies, can you hear this right now? Does that sound like something that you're hearing right now, but in a higher octave? Because that's what I'm hearing. Okay, so I had to, had to look this up. And um, the F sharp, actually, let me preface this. I got my other computer going on over here. I'm charting this day by day. And on November 11th, the predominant note, the frequency that I was hearing was C. And thank you, Skylar, for uh, aligning these notes to the chakras. I, I wasn't thinking about that. Skylar made a mention on in a comment on one of my posts. So I aligned these also to the chakras. Um, so on the 11th of November, we had the key of C. That was the predominant high-pitched frequency. And that is the root chakra. And then on the 12th, it was A, which is the third eye. So you can see how these high pitched frequencies are coming in and working on certain energy centers of the body. And then on the 13th, 14th and 15th of this month, it was in the key of D and D is the sacral chakra as Skylar pointed out. And then today we started out at F sharp, which is, it's like a half step off it's this right here. So it's a half step away from a G and a half step away from an F. So what that is, is the G and the F would be between the throat and the third eye. So it's like stuff going on right between there. And then, like I said earlier today, it was the F sharp. 
this one. But then somewhere we transitioned into a C, which is this. So I'm curious if any of you guys are hearing those high pitched frequencies in those keys right now. Skylar's saying that she's been feeling lots of activity around her heart chakra last night and today. The F note. So that would be the F. And this would actually be an F right here. And this is the F sharp. But like I said, I, I'm hearing the F sharp and the C sharp, and I'm hearing them together. So the F sharp, which is what I heard earlier today, that stands for, and I, I looked it up and I'll post the link here on the video somewhere when I get done, uh, of where I got the meaning of each note. But the F sharp means triumph over difficulty. A free sigh of relief uttered when hurdles are surmounted. An echo of a soul which has fiercely struggled and finally conquered. So, you know, we're all going through a lot of crap right now. And if it's not us personally, we're, we're going through a lot of stuff as the collective, you know, especially here in the United States where we have the wildfires burning out in California. We have the red tide here in Florida. It's just pure chaos. And it's, it's chaos that doesn't have to be, you know, I, I, I kind of have the feeling that those California fires were intentional uh, for various reasons I'm not going to get into right now. And, uh, you know, the red tide equally, that's intentional too. It's, you know, the, sim the simplest answer with red tide is to, number one, regulate the toxicity that goes into the water from all these places like, you know, big sugar and farming and stuff like that, regulate how much toxicity can actually go in the water, which should be little to none. And then have the historical flow go back into the Everglades where it originally went instead of coming out of both sides of the, of the state and poisoning both the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. It's pretty simple. It doesn't take rocket scientists to figure that one out. You know, so, um, you know, the answers are simple, but yet they still allow the red tide to happen and killing all this beautiful sea life. And it's not fair to them. So, yeah, we're all going through these struggles and strifes. And it's so important more than ever right now uh, to stay positive. Um, something's going on big time. And that was the message. I got the key of D three days in a row. Okay, let me see if I have the meaning of D on here. Yeah, D is the key of triumph and victory. So something that we had that three days in a row, uh, and this would be uh, D. That's a D right there. That's triumph victory so what i'm feeling intuitively you know as above so below there's a lot that's going on in the aethers as well as maybe white hats here on the planet or our um, guides our posse are working behind the scenes you know and as much stress and strife as we might be feeling something really big is going on and that was three days in a row of the high pitch frequency of D and what I'm doing too is okay. My, my epiphany was that, okay, within every chord, there are specific notes within the chord. For example, a, a C would be a C E G B E. All right. So this is like the, the C, but a C chord consists of the C, the E, the G, the B 
and the E. So what I'm looking at is each one of those individual notes within the chord itself and finding the message that's hidden within that as well. So we're really diving into this um, because there's so much more that we're not getting with these high pitched frequencies, high, high pitched frequencies. We're all hearing them. We're all feeling them and experiencing this, but we're not understanding what the message is. And each note has a message. And so that's what we're getting down to right now. So just namaste, hello, welcome to this <laughs> impromptu Facebook Live. Uh, Susie, Cheryl, Skyler, Yolanda, Yoli, Valerie, Julia, Jennifer, Mike, Nora, Wanda, Andrea, Diane, Shannon, Tom, Tomas, Kelly. Oh gosh, there's lots of people that came in. But yeah, what we're hearing uh, right now. Oh, thank you, Julia. Um, yeah, I, I look completely different. I look like I lost all my hair and I, I need glasses. I usually wear contacts, but today was like, screw it. I don't feel like contacts today. So, nor do I feel like having my hair down. <laughs> but what we're hearing are these high pitched frequencies and they seem to be changing every day. There, there's a new frequency going on. A lot of people are hearing them, but we don't know what they exactly mean. So I've been doing a research on this. I've been putting one and one together. I've been basically looking at the notes, looking at the constructions of the chords and the notes within the chords, and then figuring out what figuring out what the message is for each note and why we're we're receiving these. And it was brought to my attention by Skylar that each note has a corresponding uh, chakra, so we can also figure out how this is affecting the chakras as well. Maybe it's some kind of attunement that's going on for each chakra. So D is the sacral chakra. It's one of our lower three chakras. It's uh, basically rooted in third dimensional reality. And there was a lot of crap that was going on and that we needed to work through. We had the, um, today was the F sharp and the C sharp. And an F would be the throat chakra and a C would be the third eye. So we're working with somewhere in these kind of frequencies, somewhere between here and here, um, but not necessarily one or the other. So it may be a combination of both. But like I said, is anyone hearing this as a high pitched frequency, this note right now? Envision that being a much higher octave than that. It's that note, but it's a higher octave. Is anyone hearing that right now? Because it's coming in loud and clear with me. As a matter of fact, I still hear the F as well. So if you tune into those frequencies, you'll hear one or the other, or maybe both. F is the heart, Skylar saying. G is the throat, okay? Hi, er. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to figure these out and putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, so basically, you know, what we're hearing in the last few days is C, A, D, F sharp, and C sharp. So C, A, Oops, F sharp and C sharp. And somewhere there's a song in there. <laughs> I don't know how the song would play out in that. But those are basically the chords that we're hearing in the high pitch frequencies. And I'm sure somebody that's much more musically talented than I am, could figure out a cool song with that. F sharp is, that's what we heard earlier today. That's basically my Sharona. Or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's the F sharp. 
Um, that, as I mentioned, that best triumph over difficulty, a free sigh of relief uttered when hurdles are surmounted, the echo of a soul which has fiercely struggled and finally conquered. And then today is the C, um, C sharp. I'm not sure what penitential means, but it, the description says penitential lamentation, an intimate conversation with creator source, the friend and help meet of life, whatever that means, size of disappointment, disappointed friendship and love lie in this re, uh, radius. So there is a lot of strife. There's that talking to creator source, you know, kind of why, what's going on, you know, that kind of thing. But we're also coupling that with the triumph over difficulty, you know, so there's a lot going on. It seems like, once again, intuitively, if you had to put them both together, the F sharp and the C sharp, it sounds like a lot of addressing, here's the problem, let's address it and transmute it. I think that's what, what's going on right now. And so we're going through the transmutation process with the C sharp. And we addressed the issues, we figured out what the issues were with the F sharp, and now we're transmuting the, those issues with the C sharp. <laughs> and let's not forget we have Mercury retrograde right now. God, I'm surprised my guitar even works. I shouldn't have said that. Now it's gonna probably shut off on me. <laughs> so Julia's saying, I think I hear the F. Okay, this would be the F. I hear that. And it is, it's very high. It's many, it's probably two or three octaves higher than what this note I'm playing on my guitar. But that's the highest note I can hit in an F on a guitar. And then the C, I'm also hearing the C sharp. A song per week chakra act activation. <laughs> Just checking out the comments. Yeah, today's been a really peculiar day. It's hard to figure out, you know, with the different frequencies that are coming in with it shifting from one high pitch frequency earlier in the day to another one right now. Um, I think we're getting an idea of you know, how to fine tune what we're hearing into something that's tangible and makes sense. And it's, it's not easy to <laughs> make sense of everything that's going on right now when so much of this stuff is being controlled and manipulated by malevolent people who don't have our best interests at heart. You know, a lot of this stuff is, it's almost as if they're trying to make the end times come to fruition. You know, this whole end time prophecy, you know, you think about the, you know, the, they say that, you know, the sea will turn to blood or the water will turn to blood. Well, yeah, what's, what, what do we have right now? Red tide, you know, it's killing all the sea life. And it's all man-made, it's crap. It shouldn't and doesn't have to be this way. So I know we're all feeling a lot of this stress, tension, but it's like those three consecutive days of having the D, um, high pitch frequency, the key of triumph and victory. I mentioned this earlier, but for those who didn't watch, 
I had a dream a few days ago that I'm driving in my car and I'm in upstate New York, probably over 90% of my dreams, I'm back in New York, even though I haven't lived there in 14, 15 years. But most of my dreams, I'm back home, home. Now, I know that a lot of you also have that feeling of wanting to go home, but not necessarily, you know, where you are, more so going home. But I'm back home, and I'm driving up a mountain, and there's four lanes on this mountain that are all going in the same direction, up. And the cars were going slow around me, so I just put the pedals in the metal, hit cruise control, and I'm flying up the mountain. All of a sudden, I hit these sharp turns, so I'm trying to reach the brake just to, just to tap it to shut off the cruise control, and I just couldn't touch the brake. I wasn't allowed to slow down. I took the psychology of sleep and dreams in college, and our dreams are played out through metaphor, and what they were, the typical metaphors were not they made sense, but they weren't metaphysical metaphors. So typically, if you're climbing up steps, you're going up a hill, you're climbing up a mountain, that's you're, you're about to get a raise or something really good is going to happen in your life. But the way I see it is it's ascension. It's like when you see a ladder in your dreams, that's not a ladder, it's DNA. But if you're going up, climbing up anything, that's you're looking at ascension. So as I was ascending up the mountain, I'm not allowed to slow down. There was no fear in this. I have to point that out too. There was no fear in that dream. I'm flying around these corners and I can't slow down, but I just knew it was, it was cool. I felt like I should slow down, but I wasn't allowed to. So that's the message. You know, despite all this crap that's going on, it's pedal to the metal, balls to the wall. We're flying up that mountain. There's no stopping. And a lot of this stuff that's going on right now, it's just a distraction. It's taking us away from where we need to be, which is focused and grounded and continuing to move forward despite all the crap that's going on in the world. And I think a lot of these messages that we're getting through the high-pitched frequencies are portraying the same message as well. So just one man's opinion. Check out the comments if there's anything else going on here. Uh, Julia's asking, do I hear them in both ears? Yes, I do, but predominantly it's either one ear or the other. For the most part, I'll hear it a little bit louder in the right ear. Sometimes it's a little bit louder in the left ear. A lot of times it'll be like two notes layered on top of each other, like the F, F, um, F sharp and the C sharp. Oops. But sometimes they're layered and it's dissonant. Like it might be. So that would be this layered with this. Or this. And it sounds very dissonant. It's what I hear. I can't control what I hear. And it doesn't sound as dissonant when it's this. But they're both there. I hear them both. Um, but usually it's what I'll hear is the predominant sound and I'll locate it up here. And I know that, you know, this is a G. And then from there, I look up the musical interpretation. But yes, I, I, I do hear them in both ears. One ear is much louder, usually, than the other. And usually, that's the right ear. Yes, yeah, Skylar, I think Facebook is blocking my lives, Facebook lives now, too. Um, Gosh, it would, it would be easy normally to get 
you know, 50, 75 people or more. And uh, yeah, I did the uh, live video this morning. I think we had four people. So all I can do is keep on keeping on. I'm not gonna let it bring me down. You know, whatever happens, happens. I gotta keep moving forward. Pedal to the metal. <laughs> Yeah, so I think, yeah, I think they are blocking me. It's funny, too. It's, it's, call it a coincidence, but since I contacted Facebook support, now I'm getting blocked even worse. <laughs> Go figure. But the guy I'm working with at, at Facebook support, he seems like a really cool guy. He seems awake and aware, so who knows? We'll see where that goes. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Dan's saying usually her left ear. Okay, that's interesting. I'm sure there's a meaning to that too. You know, in, in QHHT, you know, one side of the body is past life, the other side is current life. Like, for example, you know, anything that happens, any scars or bruises that you might have on your left hand side, that would be a past life experience. And the right hand side would be current life. So, if you're hearing that in your left left ear, there's something in past life, maybe that you're transmuting predominantly, or if you're, for whoever's listening right now, you know, if you're getting that predominant sound in one of the years, think about how that means, whether it's past life or present life. Like I said, left side is past life, right side is current current life. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. I, I like contact lenses because it gives me the peripheral vision and I'm blind as a bat. But uh, today I just didn't feel like wearing them. Exactly, Diane. Their main goal is always to keep us in fear and we need to move beyond that. There's a lot of crap that's going on and we can send out positive love and intentions to everyone that's been affected by all this negative stuff and everything, including our sea life. But we can't let it get us down. We have to stay focused. We have to stay grounded and keep moving forward and keep maintaining that high vibration. That's so important now more than ever. Aw, Bonnie. Love you, sister. So Julie is saying that the right ear is supposedly a positive greeting or affirmation according to the law of one. It's, you know, I read the law of one. I don't remember that, but there's so much in there. <laughs> and it was a long time ago, too. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Uh, today was today's high-pitched frequencies. Um, what I've noticed in the past was there was just one, basically, um, that I would hear throughout the day, but I wasn't really, I would assume that that was the same one throughout the day, but now I'm checking the morning and the evening. And today was the first day, day that I did that, and I noticed that we went from an F um, sharp to a C sharp. So in two different frequencies, but they, they kind of go together. So we got the F sharp, C sharp. They go, they go well together. So I'm going to be doing an article on this. I'll be putting the link in the article as well on what the interpretation of each note means and what I've found so far in my research. So I think I'm going to leave it off at that. We made it all the way up to 13 people. Woo <laughs> I'm grateful 13 people were able to tune in. Despite the being shadow banned. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me. And 
I'll, I'll do this a little bit more often. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing this every day. I've got so much on my plate the way it is, you know, with the beach reports and the websites and everything. I'm doing the best I can with what I can do. Um, so I will check back when something is extremely interesting in correlation to these high pitch frequencies. And if I find out anything more, if I discover any more aha moments on this, you guys will be the first to know. So I'm sending you all infinite love and light. This is Greg from n5d.com and zentasia.com. Namaste.